Our chapter sailing the Mediterranean is potentially coming to a close, possibly ever, as we begin our preparations to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And we've certainly got some obstacles to overcome. Jason, what the f Leg one of three will be passing through the Gibraltar Strait, enduring strong currents, container ships, and trying to avoid a pot of orcas attacking the rudders of sailboats and even sinking some. A video of killer whales seen attacking small and large boats off the coast of Spain. There have been an increase in these encounters and some wonder why. And then we'll officially be out of the Mediterranean Sea and into the Atlantic Ocean as we begin our five day passage to the Canary Islands. G'day guys and welcome to the caravan. I feel like we haven't done this since episode one when I was a long haired Yahoo. It's been a long time since we talked to the camera like this. <laughs> but yeah, um, we've We've made it here. It was a wild ride to get here, as you'll find out in the next couple of episodes. Yeah. Well, some of it went really smooth. Some of the crossing, the big crossing, was a little bit disastrous. So things are taking a little bit of a turn for the worse. You done yourself, darling. We've just held the scrolls all day. All our electronics failed. So no autopilot, no wind instruments. Yeah. We should uh, probably plug all the holes in our boat before we do an Atlantic crossing, eh? This week's episode, we have to fill in a few gaps for you guys because we were just really slack at filming, to be honest. We weren't sure what we were doing still, but we were prepping like we were going to go just in case. And we had a lot of things kind of going wrong that I was taking as a sign to tell us not to go. Um, but Jason really wanted to go. I wasn't feeling sure. And yeah, we were just kind of having a hard time because we just didn't know whether we are staying in the med for another year or crossing the world's second largest ocean and we just didn't feel like picking up the camera or when we had decided for a little while we are going then we were just so flat out trying to prep things and order things and do all of the things that we just didn't pick up the camera and we're a bit slack so yeah we're gonna fill in a few gaps aren't we it's gonna yeah obviously be a little bit different but hopefully you guys enjoy it been thinking all week about this decision on the atlantic crossing I don't know, my gut's kind of telling me not to go. I just don't feel ready. I feel like we've got too much still to do. I would have rather be ready a lot earlier than this and have everything. It's just been one of those years we've had things break. Um, we've had to spend money on things like that. We obviously also got our Vimy and stuff upgraded, which was well overdue. It was pretty bad. Okay, I guess over the next few days, we'll make our decision. I kind of feel like saying to Jason that I just don't want to go, but I'm also worry to disappoint him I guess but at the same time it's not something to be taken lightly and if I don't feel ready then I don't think we should go I feel like um if we have the winter to prep this year then next year we can kind of slow down and stop and smell the roses a little bit more this year was just so hectic even though we saw some really cool places I feel like we didn't really enjoy ourselves as much because we were so rushed to get across we ended up missing places because we had bad weather and obviously all these things to fix that have broken that have cost us a fortune. So yeah, it's been an expensive year. I think if we do stay, it's definitely not gonna be a bad thing. We're gonna feel really well prepared next year, which will make me mentally feel more ready. Anyway, who knows? We still could end up going. We might be able to make it work somehow, but my gut is telling me that we're not going. While we're on that note, we'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this week's episode. As you guys know, our journey sailing the world is full of adventure, but it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Last year was a bit of a tough one for me. I was struggling a little bit with the lack of routine that this lifestyle brings, and also with the decision on whether to cross the Atlantic or take a break, spend the winter in one place, and try and build that routine back up again. Mental health is something that affects us all in different ways. For me, it's been a journey of ups and downs over the years, but talking to a therapist has definitely helped me navigate through those tough times. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp connects you to a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful and unbiased advice. First, you go to their website. You can use our link betterhelp.com slash escapade. Just answer a few questions and BetterHelp will match you to a professional who has years of experience. And if you're not vibing with your therapist, you can change as many times as you like at no extra cost. You can do it all from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat, messaging, whichever way feels most comfortable for you. It's uh, great for us because we can do it from the beach or the boat while we're sailing, while we're on anchor, and it's definitely the least intimidating way to start talking to a therapist. 
And you know what? It's not just for tough times. It's a valuable resource for anyone wanting to prioritize their mental health and well-being, whether that be setting goals or just generally working on yourself. Let BetterHelp connect you to a licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home, wherever that be. Visit betterhelp.com slash escapade or choose leading the escapade upon sign up for a special discount on your first month. Thanks guys, we hope you take advantage of BetterHelp. For now, we take you back to the rest of our 30 hour passage from Port Dania to Al Marymah. We arrived in Al Marymah close to midnight and were able to tie up to the customs dock for the night for free. Oh, stunning morning this morning. We arrived at midnight last night and I feel so much better for getting that little bit of sleep, even if it was only like five hours or so. I don't know, we feel so good and ready to go for the day. But yeah, we are moving to where we need to go in the marina. I'm not sure where we're going, but nice and calm today. Bit of blow tomorrow. Oh yeah, Janae's, Janae's undies went for a swim yesterday in the boat. We've got a leak somewhere and they just keep smashing her undies. So yeah, good times. We had a few days to bunker down from some heavy wind that reached into the 50s, even into the marina. The wash that was running through parts of the marina were crazy. And after having a walk around, we were pretty happy with where we were situated, tucked in pretty nicely from the worst of the weather. Jay still gets nervous in marinas, worrying about the boat bashing into the dock, so he likes to keep well away. But then we tend to have this issue to deal with. <sighs> Do we trust it? It's about to fall off again. It's about to fall. Get your hands full there, dog. <laughs> How cute is she? She just lets me hold her like a baby. Once the wind had finally passed, we were able to have our rigging inspection done. The main reason we came here and probably the biggest deciding factor for the Atlantic crossing. Tell us what's going on, Han. What happened? We just had our rigging inspection. So there's a few little bits of corrosion on the boom where the vang attaches to the boom and a couple of other little spots. So we need to drill out the existing rivets um, and then clean a bit of the corrosion, get a steel plate made so it's a little bit lower and it won't corrode again. That's the job here. One of the pulleys needs to be replaced. It's cracked. But the rigging itself, he said, is actually really good. There's nothing wrong with the rigging at all. Especially it's like 11, 12 years old now, so. Yeah. 12, um, I think. He said rigging is really good. We need to maybe cut off a bit of the backstay to tension it because it's already at its tightest point. Um, so hopefully we can do that, otherwise we're up for a new backstay to be, to be done, which is gonna be a lot more expensive. Yeah, but the other thing is we started talking about the cruising chute and the cruising chute pole, and then we went to go check out the pole and everything, and we've realized that when we went to Denia, we left the pole in, and we were in a bit of a rush, mad panic to get it out. And so that we could put the anchor down because we're in really down. shallow water. Yeah, and we've got a rock now, so you have to take the pole out because it's got the, the roll bar to, to um The pole kind of goes through the roll, roll bar. bar yeah. yeah. So we Janae took it out in a rush and didn't we didn't pack it away properly. Like clip it into like the little brace that it's got there, like the little casing. And we've just found out it's a thousand euro just for that pole. Roundabout. That's just another thing to add, isn't it? Now. So it looks like we're not going to have enough money to cross. Oh, yeah. So I've been just like taking all of these things as signs that are like trying to push us or like tell us not to go. And that is just a big fat sign from the universe. I'm also not feeling ready, but it's probably because of all of these things that I know we've got to do. And I feel madly rushed. We don't have enough money and I just like want to feel good about it and positive and I'm not feeling positive about it. And I think like... You have to be in a good mindset to be doing something like this. So I just, I think that we should wait another year and like we can spend the winter here slowly getting everything we need. Like when we get money coming in and 
like we can like next year we can start start to get all of the things we need for the crossing and better because we can get like an AIS transponder and like the things that we wouldn't have been able to do we've got lots to plan and talk about and it's a bit it's a bit strange like because that's what we thought we were doing but I'm sure it's meant to be so yeah, basically we thought that was the end of it. We decided that we we're gonna stay in our Merrimar and spend the winter and do another year in the Med because we just didn't have the money to do all of the things we needed. Another thousand euros for the pole basically sent us way over budget. And yeah, we also had some troubles. We were meant to be getting lithium batteries sent to Gibraltar because it's tax free. We couldn't make that work. So then we were having to order batteries to Spain as well. So all of these extra costs that we weren't expecting had popped up and I was just kind of taking it as a sign from the universe to just stop us going. Um, but... And I thought the universe was challenging us and... To keep pushing. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard one, hey, you don't know which way to take it. But... Yeah, but uh, we managed to scrape enough funds to get all the basics that we needed. Yeah. You could seriously go on for ages um, preparing for the Atlantic and keep buying things and still not feel prepared. But yeah, we managed to yeah get enough to get our batteries, our LiPo4 batteries, which we bought on Amazon. And also the pole and our medical kit and our ditch bag. That was kind of the main things, hey. Just all safety gear, basically. So, and then obviously we needed money for provisioning, but the good thing was we could then do that when we're in Canary Islands, which is when we would have been paid again. So um, we could work all of that out later. So yeah, we ended up just continuing to prep. And then once we had everything, then we're gonna make a final decision on if we were going to go or if we weren't going to go. Jason. Um, this is cooking in the kitchen. You're saying it like I never cook in the kitchen. Not too often, dolls. Oh. What did you get up to today? Oh, I just did a bit of cleaning up of wiring, electrical stuff. We've got our big list happening over here. Had to jump in the starboard aft locker where the gas bottles are underneath that and clean the Wabasto, the Wabasto piping because it's been trod on when the stainless guys did our stainless art and clean up a bit of wiring and stuff down there. There's a few random loose wires. And then you rewired the, finally rewired the solar at the back. It was a bit of a mess from when we got the art tree done, hey? Oh, it looks so neat now. Yeah, looks great. What's on the agenda for tomorrow? Well, probably the Starlink. So the wiring for that? Yeah, and then I was going to service the engine, the generator, pickle the water maker. You're not going to get all that done in one day? I'll probably get the two the engines done. Right. I'll see how I'm running for time. Yeah. But there's heaps to do. Yeah. As you can see. Yeah. So we've also got a doctor's appointment um, so that we can get a bunch of prescriptions to do our medical kit. So obviously our medical kit isn't just first aid stuff. It's actually like antibiotics, painkillers, um, different creams, seasickness tablets, a few other things. I've been doing heaps of research from other people's kits like SV Delos, Out Chasing Stars, I think had like an Excel sheet on what they have. So I've kind of done my research based upon, upon those two, another friend who sent a first aid book with a list, and then basically I've done all my research to figure out what everything actually is, um, and then streamline the kit so they're not doubling up on different random things. So we'll go to the doctors tomorrow. Um, our friends also went to this doctor and he had no problem prescribing them all the stuff they needed. Um, and then they went to a pharmacy. So that's on the agenda for me tomorrow. Hey, where's my summer red? On a potato. I'm gonna get some. Do you want some? No, thank you. Oh. I'll get it for you though. Oh, <gasps> that's service. Hard work, though. Can you yeah, see a little right. Marla in here? It's getting cold. So yeah, we got our whole medical kit sorted. Uh, we're gonna do a whole video on our medical kit and our first aid kit because we want to take you guys through everything that we bought how we went about the whole thing and just how important it is to actually have something like this for the Atlantic Crossing. I know it looks insane, we have so much stuff, but yeah, we've got some stories to tell you of just things that went wrong for us, for other people, and 
yeah, how important it is to have this. So yeah, watch out for that video. That'll be coming soon. I need someone like this in a long time. We're about to take this one to the vet because she has a bit of a watery, gunky eye and she's sneezing, so she's definitely got some kind of flu or something. Got this out already and look who's popped in there. You're not meant to be going. <laughs> you can barely fit in there either. <laughs> We've just bought a little dehumidifier on Amazon, so we'll see how it goes. It only holds 750 mils, so it's only a small one. But it's nice because it's, there you go, in comparison to the laptop. It's a good little size. It's kind of like the size of someone having a diffuser or something anyway. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll just have to empty it each day. But that's fine for when you're living on the boat anyway. And it doesn't use much power. Obviously, at the moment, we're on shore power. So we can just leave this on all the time anyway. Um, but, yeah, we've been having problems with our mattress. I'll show you. So we leave our hatch cracked open. It's pretty much dried up now that you can see here. Some drops. Um, water all builds up along here. And then water builds up on the walls here, which are actually slanted, like a bit of a hill. But we've been finding, I've been waking up and it's like wet. You can actually like wipe it and your hand gets wet. And obviously then all of the edge of our mattress is getting wet. So I can't make the bed every day. I've got to literally lift the beds up and let them dry out every single day. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that helps with some of this. I also could not handle looking at the ugly vinyl headliner that was hanging off our cabin walls any longer. We tried to re-stick it, but after many failed attempts, it was time for these to go. We'd have to put up with bare fiberglass walls for a while till we could afford to replace them. But there was old mildew stains on the back of the vinyl and honestly, anything was going to look better than that. Plus, I could finally look out of my porthole. It felt good to get rid of it, but it was definitely a bigger job than I expected, especially without a working vacuum. Another item to add to the never ending shopping list. So basically we were sitting in the marina waiting for the rest of our packages and I was still really up and down on what I wanted to do. When we decided we were going, then I just started freaking out about it. Just really had bad feelings about it. And then, so yeah, we kind of kept going back and forth, didn't we? I was getting really upset. And then I just like, just decided like, that's it. I'm not going, final decision. It just doesn't feel good kind of thing. But then the hardest part about it was Jason was feeling the exact opposite and we weren't on the same page and I didn't want to upset him so it was like no matter what one of us was just not having a good time basically so yeah we ended up making a compromise didn't we we kind of met in the middle basically the the compromise that we made was that we would do the Gibraltar to the Canary Islands and then we would see how we're feeling we're not going to put pressure on doing the rest of the crossing we're just going to do that see how that goes and go from there so yeah there was a lot riding on this passage if we had a bad passage that probably would have been my decision not to go any further whereas if we have a good passage then I was probably going to then feel motivated to keep going and not be scared and and feel more ready kind of thing so also we wanted to get to Gibraltar as we had friends there Brett and Vic they were also crossing and doing the leg from Gibraltar to the Canary Islands and it would be a good idea for us to buddy boat together um, it would make Janae feel more comfortable or both of us feel more comfortable yeah for as sure. it's, it's a treacherous crossing you've got um, it can be yeah it's full-on you've got the currents through Gibraltar you've got the orcas to watch out for you've got unpredictable weather also our first time leaving the Mediterranean Sea and going into the Atlantic swell. So we were a little bit nervous about that too, weren't we? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, they were meant to be gone already and then they were just still there waiting for weather. So we were really hoping that we were just gonna get there in time and it looked like we were going to be able to. So yeah, we got the package, um, just randomly rocked up and then we checked the weather and we basically had good weather for like this one to two days to get to Gibraltar to then wait out a little bit of windy weather again. So yeah, we just decided to go and that was that. We were going. Today we're gonna head to Gibraltar. It's about a 24 hour passage. We wanna go through the stretch in daylight where there's orcas because 
most attacks have been at night time. We want to be able to visually see them um, to come up with a plan of an attack if we do see them. I guess that's our reasoning behind it and we're just going to hug the coastline. We should be there about this time tomorrow, Arvo. I couldn't believe we were actually leaving. It all happened so fast. It was such a crazy few weeks. A roller coaster of emotions as we made one of the biggest and scariest decisions of our entire lives. Join us next week as we sail to Gibraltar before leaving very soon after for leg one of our journey across the Atlantic. All right, here we go. What a whirlwind as we say goodbye to the Mediterranean Sea and hello to the Atlantic Ocean.